Hey guys, welcome to Pregnancy and Postpartum TV. Today I'm going to be talking about why gestational diabetes is not your fault. So I get this question a lot in my gestational diabetes Facebook group that moms are wondering, you know, if I didn't eat these sweets, um, what have I avoided gestational diabetes? Is it my fault? Um, and another heartbreaking thing they'll say is I feel like I'm failing my baby. So I just want to put um, rest to um, sort of that and know that gestational diabetes is not your fault. And then I also want to alleviate your fears and know that you can still have a healthy baby. So yes, there are increased risk to gestational diabetes. However, with controlling gestational diabetes, and we have excellent treatments now, whether it's lifestyle, um, diet, exercise, or medication, um, we can control gestational diabetes and drastically reduce the risk to still have healthy babies that are healthy size. If you're new here, my name is Jessica Pumple. I'm a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes and bariatric educator. And I work on a playlist of videos for moms with gestational diabetes. So if you have gestational diabetes or you're interested in uh, pregnancy and postpartum, then consider subscribing and hitting the bell to get notified every week when I put out a new video. Looking at the physiology of pregnancy and insulin resistance, so we have our placenta, which is supporting the growth of our baby and transferring nutrients from mom to baby. And as the placenta grows, it produces hormones. So specifically, it produces estrogen, cortisol, human placental lactogen. And as it produces these hormones more and more as it grows bigger and bigger, the further on in pregnancy, it causes insulin resistance. So insulin resistance you can think of so we our cells are made up of our body are made up of trillions of cells so you can think of them like little circles making up our all of our body and our pancreas produces insulin and insulin is like a key it unlocks the doors to these cells to move sugar from our food our carbohydrate food also our liver stores sugar so to move the sugar from our blood into the cells where we can use it for energy and with insulin resistance you can think of those cell doors as being sticky so it doesn't open as easily so in a healthy pregnancy insulin resistance occurs at the end of all healthy pregnancies and so women's insulin production is usually about three times the regular to try to overcome these sticky doors so producing more keys to try to open these sticky doors in gestational diabetes it's likely that the insulin production is not able to keep up with overcoming the insulin resistance or the sticky doors of these cells and so the sugar isn't able to move as efficiently from the blood into the cells where we can use them for energy and the sugar starts up to build up in the bloodstream I'm also going to take it a next step because I know what you're going to ask next and you're going to say, well, is it my fault that I have insulin resistance? So insulin resistance is highly um, based on your genetics, your ethnicity, also age. There are environmental factors, so extra weight, um, especially abdominal adiposity, as well as um, lack of exercise, as well as lack of sleep, um, smoking or other things that can increase insulin resistance. So a lot of those things are directly out of our control. However, let's say, just for argument's sake, you're going to say, well, what about the extra weight? Did that contribute to the insulin resistance? And my argument there would be that we, our actions are very hormonally and chemically driven. So if you think about how we evolved, we evolved as hunter and gatherers. And in order to survive, we had to have a very strong drive to want to go out and hunt and gather food. It took a lot of effort. And if we didn't have that drive, then we wouldn't have survived because it was such hard work at the time. So we have evolved to have a strong drive for food. Now we are placed in a society where we have food availability everywhere. We have hyper palatable food that we can't stop eating. Um, we have a lot of processed foods that don't trigger our fullness hormones. Um, we have certain people that are lacking satiety or fullness hormones. And so there is a lot of things that are playing into our hunger, our fullness, 
extra weight, um, cravings, and so many other things that could influence our weight that someone might struggle with more so than someone else. So I would argue that regardless of any of the um, factors for insulin resistance is not someone's fault, but that their initial um, actions or lack of actions were hormonally driven um, to create a, the certain condition that they're in now. So some people have more of a drive for food than other people. So for example, ghrelin is our hunger hormone that drives us to seek out and look for food. And then on the other hand, some people don't have enough of the fullness or satiety hormones, um, specifically like GLP-1, that would cue us to feel full. So when we eat food and our stomach expands, there's stretch receptors in our stomach, and these communicate with our um, hypothalamus and our brain to say, I'm full. But if we don't have enough of those hormones that are going to say, I'm full, then someone might continue eating over their needs, which could contribute to extra weight. And so again, I would argue that that wasn't necessarily their fault if it was hormonally driven and they had a hormonal imbalance. So I hope I have convinced you that gestational diabetes is not your fault. I would love to know what you think in the comments below. So let me know what you think. Of course, if you haven't grabbed it already, in the description box below, I will put a link to a free meal plan for gestational diabetes for better blood sugar. I'll also put the link for our gestational diabetes support Facebook group. If you found that video helpful, then click the thumbs up button. Also, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking the round circle right there and hitting the notification bell. I will also link to the gestational diabetes playlist well, as well as another video for gestational diabetes that I think you would find helpful. All right. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.